Tom, when we spoke at the Combine, you had said this free agency period was going to look a little different compared to last year, just given the cap. But before we get to Eric Kendricks, you took care of a lot of your own guys, guys who had been here, whose contracts were up, you re-signed. What went into those decisions? Well, I think as you build your team and you have players here that you already know are part of your culture, they fit our offense or defense, our coaches know, and we like, like we'd rather re-sign our own players if all possible. I can't do that all the time, I understand that, but and a lot of guys fit in that category, you know, Morgan Fox, and Trey Pipkins and others. So those are important signings for us because if they don't come back, now we have holes at those positions too. So it's a double-edged sword. You know, you lose a player you really like and now we have to go replace them from the outside. So retaining as many of our own as we can is how we'd like to approach it. Trey Pipkins was really candid last year, last season, just about his struggles, lack of consistency, really took it upon himself to grow and get better. How have you seen him grow, especially to earn this new contract? I mean, that's life as a professional football player. I mean, this is the best of the best at this level. And when you come into the league as a young player and a rookie, it takes time to develop and get better. And the players that have that, that mental toughness and that drive and desire to be great, they keep improving, you know, year after year, practice after practice. And he certainly fit that category. I mean, he came from Sioux Falls, so it's not like he came from Alabama. So we knew there was going to be some development time that may take longer than another player, but we thought the upside was there for him. So, but that's natural in this league. I mean, it's just so competitive. It doesn't matter how good a player you were in college. Once you get here, you have to keep improving or else people will pass you along. So um, to see Trey do that is, uh, you know, we're not surprised by it, but we're certainly proud of him. Jalen Guyton was kind of a surprise out here when he showed up last week. He obviously is going through his rehab process. Chargers fans love speed. They love what he can bring to the game. What led to him coming back? Yeah, because we've seen it. You know, he can really stretch people out vertically and he can finish catches down the field. We've seen that for, you know, for at least three years now. We know he's coming off the ACL surgery. He's come along pretty well. We know he won't be full in the off-season work right now. We'll try and get him ready for training camp, but kind of come in and bring that same element. You know, we, we missed that last year when he got hurt. Uh, you, could, you could tell on offense when he wasn't out there. So um, get him back in that mix again and uh, you know, hopefully he can help us out. Is there something to be said about keeping the core of that receiver room together at all? Um, if you think they're good and they can play, yeah. then absolutely. <laughs> and we do. Like I said, bringing Jalen back was big for us. Um, he was a free agent. He could have gone anywhere else. But yeah, if you feel good about the talent you have, which we do in that room, um, yeah, you'd like to keep them together as long as you can. Um, we've got a different mix of skill sets from those players and some really high level players in that room and Jalen kind of adds a different di different element to that group. What made Morgan Fox such a key member of the D-line last season? He just did a tremendous job. We, we always knew he was a really good inside pass rusher. He's always been very good at that. The fact that he played for Brandon, Brandon knew exactly the role that, was gonna, that he's going to really fit in to use his strengths. You could see that, but then last year we had some injuries on the defensive line and he had to play a lot of snaps. Um, and even him in the run game, I mean, his physicalness, his leverage, his toughness, his great instincts with how he how he how he plays, um, it just stood out week after week after week. And you know, those are the guys you want to go to war with, the guys like him. So um, to, to bring him back uh, was a big part of the defense. You mentioned it's hard to keep everyone. Obviously, DeAndre Carter, one of those guys that you've lost. Where will you look to maybe fill that role that he plays? We have to look a lot of different places. Obviously, the draft. We'll kind of see what's out there after the draft and you know bring in some people to compete for that job it may not necessarily be one player but we're gonna have to attack it a couple different ways and that's what we do in between now and uh, we go to training camp lose drew tranquil gain eric hendricks what do you like about his game you know we've seen eric play for a long time he just brings so much enthusiasm to the game even the building even he walks around you think he's quiet but when he gets on a football field like he just has that quick twitch ability and enthusiasm with how he plays. He'll fit right in with everybody here. We're excited to have him. What went to picking him up in free agency? I mean, there's a lot of things. I mean, he's a, he's a proven player in this league. Uh, we had a little bit of familiarity with him with our linebacker coach who was in Minnesota. Uh, Ryan Picken was with him. Um, you know, we've played against him a, you know, a number of times, and we think he can bring a real, real presence to us you know, inside playing next to Kenny Murray. And, um, I think he really fits the defense really well. All right, getting to the draft, how does your approach change when picking at 21? Approach is exactly the same, whether you're picking at you know, 5, 12, 21, 31, 32. It's, it's the same approach. We prepare as much as we can, go through every possible scenario. Now there's probably some more scenarios the farther you pick in the first round, but the process remains the same. And I'll say this, with JoJo Wooden and, and Kevin Kelly kind of really running the nuts and bolts of the process, we can't do it without those two guys. They're incredible at what they do. I can't survive in my job without them doing their job at a high level. 
And that's not to mention the amount of people that go into this draft that have a big role in this. Like Steve Bolson who works in IT, but he has to set up. It's a huge job. It's a huge job because we can't send the pick in without IT being there. Um, but to have the draft in two different locations, he gets both of them set up like that. We know it works. But I will say, you know, with JoJo and Kevin, with how they run the process, how detailed they are, you know, that process stays the same year after year and it's been successful for us. How many mock drafts do you guys do? I mean, I do a lot. I, I do, especially the last two weeks, I do a lot. Fully knowing that, you know, we're, we're making guesses like everybody else. Um, but it does give me some clarity as far as managing the draft of what could happen, what could be there, and what we could do whether it's stay put, trade up or trade down. If we do enough of these mock drafts, it's just something may pop up like, boy, I didn't think that could happen, uh -huh. but it just did. So, if, okay, how would we approach that? Do you read any that other pundits do? Oh yeah, okay. I do. Now there's certain ones I believe in more than others. All right, you want to name names? No. <laughs> but the thing is, there's some really good people out there that, that yeah. do it. Now they don't have all the information that we have. Um, the public doesn't have all the information, but you know, the people put a lot of work into it. And, uh, and I think you can kind of tell like who's, you know, who's really clued in, who isn't. And um, yeah, there's some that are very good. You hosted a local pro day out here just a few weeks ago. What do you glean from that experience? You know, anytime you get players in front of your coaches, you know, to really go through a, essentially like a little bit of a practice, this is great. You know, having quarterbacks and receivers running routes and catching balls and having defensive backs back pedal and turn and plant. You know, have our coaches get a good feel for some of these players. I think it's always neat to have, you know, kids that played in high school in this area which is just a huge area between Orange County and LA County and even Riverside County to come in and work out in the NFL field. You know, not all those kids that were here will be drafted. Um, so it may give some of those kids an opportunity that if they kind of like, kind of, you know, show out a little bit, you know, maybe we sign them after the draft or kind of have them on a list for down the road. But, you know, it, like I said, we could have invited, you know, 80 to 100 or more. Uh, but we only have so much room here for that. Um, that's one of the benefits of being in Los Angeles. So when it comes to draft boards, obviously teams usually have two, a vertical best player available and then horizontal, which is obviously based on ranking position and round grade. How helpful is maybe the horizontal board when it comes to picking a 21 and moving forward in the draft too? Yeah, we've, I've never used a vertical board before, so I have no idea how that would work. So um, ours is more the horizontal board. It's just the process that we've always used. It works for us. Um, kind of gives me more clarity than looking at a you know, 1 to a 150 number. Um, so that's just all, that's all I know. All right, final question. When do you start getting nervous on draft night? You know, if, if you prepare like we prepare, and you know, I'm lucky enough now to have, you know, 10 plus years in this job, and being in a lot of, been in draft rooms for 28 plus years. Between the experience and the preparation and then the people that we have here that we're working with, you shouldn't be nervous because we've, we've covered everything already. So, um, you know, like there's no last second running around right now trying to vet something. You know, we shouldn't have to do that. We don't. We've got great scouts. They did all this work in the fall and the spring. Um, our coaching staff is so well prepared. Like I said, JoJo and Kevin are really detailed. So, you know, the nervousness never really pops up if you're prepared. Best of luck. Enjoy it, Tom. All right. Thank you.